Hey guys, I'm Allison. I'm the Pampered Wife. I have a video for you today with a couple new products. I've got the True Botanicals Tinted SPF. I've also got some Mob Beauty eyeshadows to try, the Tower 28 Juicy Balm in the shade Shake, which is the pink that's on my lips. And then I got the Vardis Mouth Refreshing Spray, which is just a fun, new to me, trying something different kind of thing. I'm 49 years old, love clean beauty, clean everything. If you enjoy my content at all, I would so appreciate it if you like this video, comment, subscribe. It makes a world of difference in the YouTube algorithm. I'm gonna go ahead and jump in. So let's start off with the True Botanicals Everyday Skin Tint. It is a broad spectrum sunscreen, SPF 30. It is mineral. You can see my fingerprints on it <laughs> from when I put it on before. It's 18% zinc oxide and you do need to shake it well before using it, which I will do now. I forgot to mention it does come in white glass and it has a pump top. I don't know if you can lock it. It doesn't look like you can lock it by twisting it, so do keep this cap in case you bring it to travel. It's one ounce, and I can tell you the shaking makes a huge difference. When I first tried it, I didn't shake it, and I just put it on the back of my hand, which I will do now. You can see it's nice and creamy, if a bit dark for me at least during the winter, but when it came out and I didn't shake it, it was really dark and very liquidy, more watery. All I have on my face is some plum oil. Why can't I remember the names of things when I'm on here? I mean, I don't know that I do better when I'm not on here, but it is an oil that sinks in quickly. It's not greasy, and I feel like that should be okay to use with this product because True Botanicals has a lot of oils in their line, or at least their first few products were oil-based and I use them, love them. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and put this on. This was one pump, so it is a thicker cream. You can see like it's not very translucent and I know the color isn't right for me right now. It doesn't have a scent, but it has a smell. It's not exactly chemically, maybe it smells kind of like clay, like it's not a particularly pleasant smell, but it is pretty faint. Okay, so that was one pump rubbed in. I can see I'm a little splotchy here and there. If you're looking for more sheer coverage, this is not the sheerest, but it did rub out. Like you can see on the back of my hand, it definitely rubbed out. The tint is just the wrong shade for me. I think it would be perfectly fine if I got a more pale shade. I'm gonna do a little more. It's later in the day and I'm probably, well, I may walk the dog. But, I, um, so normally I would put on more sunscreen is where I was going with that. <laughs> Don't forget your neck. Doesn't have a lot of slip, like as I'm rubbing it in, it's not slippery. I'm trying to think of the texture. It feels creamy at first, but it's, um, then it is maybe, it, it doesn't feel super creamy rubbing it in. It's not super slippery. It does stay in place. So it encourages you to use enough because otherwise you'll be tugging to rub it out. You make sure I got it all spread out. I do put it on my eyelids, as you saw. It does not burn my eyelids. I also put it under my eyes. So if you're not able to use, you know, whatever you're using on your face, make sure you do use something. Lip products are often a good thing to put around your eyes because they're typically not gonna burn. But I find mineral sunscreens typically don't burn my eyes. Okay, so that is the True Botanicals Everyday Skin Tint. I'll go over each product at the end and kind of give you my final thoughts of what I recommend it, what do I think of it. I'm gonna go ahead and rush through putting on foundation and concealer and the other face products so we can move right into the Mob Beauty products that I got. Okay, I went in with some foundation. It's hiding from me now. It's the Fit Glow Foundation in the shade F3.5. I also used the Fit Glow Concealer in the shade C3. And then I went in with the OG Hydroganic Sculpted Face Stick in Copper, the Say Dew Blush in Chili. I also uh, dusted some powder on here under my eyes because as my collagen is depleted just under my eyes, this part really stands out and shines. And 
it's still quite shiny. Maybe I need to put a little more powder on. Hmm, I think I'm gonna do that. I'm using the Ilia Soft Focus uh, Fade Into You Powder. And before I put on more powder, I forgot to tell you what shade of the True Botanicals SPF I'm using. It is shade six. I think that's better. I don't care what anybody says, these translucent powders that are white always brighten as well. They're not translucent. I mean, not for the amount I need to use at least, which is typically okay. Brightening is a little okay. I'm trying not to make a ginormous mess here. I find in the summer at least, I usually want a tinted powder. Okay, let's jump into something very exciting. The Mob Beauty eyeshadow. Wonder if I can insert an Instagram clip. If I can, I'll put it in right here. So it comes with a case, it has a clear plastic cover, and these empty slots where individual eyeshadows, well, the individual eyeshadows come in pans with a part that protrudes at the back and you lay the whole pan in here, it's recessed, lay the whole pan in here and the back will stick in and hold it nicely back here with the shade names on it. You can still see the shade names, that is something I like. Most of the refillable compacts, you can't see the shade name once you've put it in the container because either it's metallic and it sticks and there's no name on the back of the you know, metal pan or the shade name is just absolutely hidden. So that's what you do. You buy the individual shades and I bought four. Um, the shade names are on the back. The names are all numbers. So we have, I can't really read them, but maybe you can. Oh, they're all upside down different in different ways I see. Some are matte, some are shimmers, and you just pick what you want, make your own palette. I really like that aspect. Also, you can fit a blush in here, a highlighter, or a contour, or a bronzer. So it's nice that all of their products fit in the same palette. That being said, they have made their palette very particular to them. So you, if you want their eyeshadows and to store them in a way that'll be easy to use, you have to buy their container. Their eyeshadows are not gonna fit in other Z palettes or palettes that are made for this type of thing where I can put like my Fit Glow eyeshadow palettes, some Fit Glow blushes, things like that, as well as Sappho and other brands. This isn't gonna do that, it's very particular. So I feel like yes, Ma Beauty is being reusable and going along with the Clean Beauty ethos, but in sort of a sneaky way, in a way of, yeah, we're doing it, you can't criticize us, but we're gonna do it in our own way, so it still creates more waste. You still have to spend money on our packaging, and if you don't refill it or don't buy exactly our product, you just can't use it, and it's a total waste, and it is made of plastic. So all of that really bothers me. While I do appreciate the clear top, you can see through exactly what you have, I appreciate you can still see the shades on the back, I appreciate that all the products, regardless of being double pan or single pan size, fit in the same palette. It just angers me of how they did this. Now, what I didn't tell you is the founders of Ma Beauty are, I believe, two of the founders that founded MAC Beauty. So I would expect these products to be excellent. I feel like why would they leave MAC Beauty, which I think they left MAC Beauty years ago when they were bought out. Uh, but why would they leave that only to start a subpar clean beauty brand? So I would expect these to be excellent and I've been playing around with them for a few days. They really are great. Let's jump into putting these on my lids after a short Kleenex break. I still have my allergies or cold or whatever this is so the makeup will be all wiped off in the center of my face. It's not the makeup's fault. This is just my personal condition. I do find the eyeshadows work better or stay more vibrant on my eyes if I use an eyeshadow primer. Today I'm using the Cloven Hello eyeshadow primer. Cloven Hello has closed its doors like so many clean beauty brands post pandemic. I do, however, recommend the Alima Pure eye primer. I love that one. And that's what I will replace this with once I run out. So I don't feel like I'm giving you 
a lesser recommendation than the one I'm using. This just happens to be the one that I still have and I don't want to be wasteful, although I did like this one a lot. I do not recommend the Ilia eye primer. I just found it to be pretty useless. I've wanted to try Mob Beauty since it launched, but I've been resistant because of the packaging because I just resented their huge marketing push of how they're sustainable and refillable. And it made me so angry because of the reasons that I just told you that it's still kind of a money grab. They're only so sustainable. They're not really working with the industry like other brands are to make less waste. They're just not. So that angers me. However, what happened is, out of all my eyeshadow palettes and all the things I have, which I actually don't have that many, I scale down, get rid of things all the time. I don't like to hold on to things that I'm not using. But looking through all my stash, I didn't have an everyday palette that was just basics with like a cream and a brown and that's about it. Maybe a little bit of shimmer to brighten my inner corner or eyelid. I didn't have anything like that and I wanted to create. So I looked at palettes, didn't see anything that catered to what I was looking for. So I went to create my own. I sort of had done it with the Fit Glow palette, but it, it didn't really work out. I think I have a video on that. I'll link it if I do have it. My dog wants a walk, of course, now. Um, so anyway, I created this one. They have a lot of different shades. They have some fun shades. They also have a cake liner, which is a black eyeliner, or but it comes in a pan like this, and it's supposed to be fantastic, but I don't want another black eyeliner. Anyway, the shades I picked will be linked in the description box down below with the exact shade names, but I'm gonna go ahead and swatch them for you, starting with this deep brown and a paler brown, and then sort of a, a nude peach and a champagne shimmer. So you can see the nude peach is quite skin tone for me. That's exactly what I wanted. I just wanted something to perfect the lid, but not to be, uh, too detectable. I wanted an everyday quieter look. So I am going to start by putting that all over the lid. I'm just taking a fluffy brush. I'll list the bar brushes down below too, but I'm going to go in first. Actually, that's not what I want to do. I don't want to put this one all over my lid. So that's not right. Although I could, I'm, I'm just going to show you my day to day look. That's why I chose these. I tried to choose a more neutral, uh, uh, my skin tone, but deeper to put in the crease. Oh, I don't find these to be particularly powdery. When I tap it off, I don't have a lot of loose powder here like happens with a lot of Clean Beauty eyeshadows. easily blends out, lays down nicely. I'm gonna go in now with the peachy nude shade that I'm gonna put all over my mobile lid. It just brightens it up, opens the eye, doing the same on the other eye. And these are matte, these two, but they aren't dead. Like I don't feel like they make my eyelids look dry, you know? They're not that kind of matte, which you can happen upon sometimes if they have a lot of clay in them. And I'm just sweeping what's left up towards the brow and the inner corner of the eye, again, to brighten. I mean, a lot of days, that would be it for me. I would put on some mascara, take the mid-tone brown that I put in my crease and bring it, you know, tie the look together a little bit more, just bring it around the corner but making sure I pull the line all the way up to the arch instead of extending, you know, just closing in the eye, I'm still trying to lift, if that makes any sense. So I'm gonna go ahead, tap in and do the other eye as well. And then also I'm gonna use the other end of this Eco Tools brush and just put a little of that same brown shade just lightly under my eye. Again, just to create a teeny bit of shadow and tie the look together. So I feel like if I did my brows, which we'll do, this is perfect for every day, this eye look. Um, but I got the deep brown so that I could take it in tonight 
as well as the shimmer, which usually I use during the day anyway. I don't even know what I was saying. My phone rang, my son tore his ACL and also has to have his LCL repaired surgeries Friday. <laughs> so my mind is a little less focused than it was, but I'm not quite crying. Um, I know he'll be fine. I know he's 17. It just, woof. Okay. Um, there's nothing I can do from here, so I'm not being a negligent mom in that way. Um, okay, uh, let's move on. Let me know if you have experience with those things. And apparently they do a little bit of a bone graft and they take some from the tendon and transplant and then some from a cadaver. It's, it's a whole big thing. Lots of screws, six weeks with his legs straight. No weight bearing for those six weeks. This is where we are. I know that's not what you were expecting in the middle of a makeup video. Neither was I. Okay, what was I saying? What was I doing? Okay. Um, so I'm gonna go in with a little bit of this dark brown shade and um, Again, tap it off, but yeah, really none of it, it's, it's not at all powdery. Like I'll hold this up close so you can see. It's really not powdery. It's a fabulous formula. I wouldn't say it's cream to powder or anything like that, but it's, um, it's a powder formula that has substance to it and is really nice, but is really easy to work with. So I'm just gonna dot this in the crease, but where I'd want the, a line to go if I did a wing, which I won't do because my eyes are quite uneven and it looks silly on me. So now I'm gonna go in with a fluffy brush and just blend that. So it blends out beautifully, right? I just blended it into the crease some um, and then a teeny bit down just to try to incorporate it into the look a little bit but just adding a little deeper shade right there just adds a little bit of drama, very subtle. I could do it a lot darker. And then I'm not even gonna apply more on that brush. I'm just gonna use it along my lash line to deepen the lashes a little bit. And I like this method because I don't have to be exact in any way and it's so subtle, putting again what's left just under my lower lash line, only on the outer half or outer third. I wonder if I want more of that. A little bit more in here. Yeah, I'll probably just leave it like that. You get the idea, but I really could glam it up if I wanted to. I could go in a lot more with this shade and deepen it. I am gonna go in with this shade, this pearly, um, not pearly, metallic champagne. It's really nice. That one is more buttery. It's definitely not a cream, but it's definitely more buttery. So I'm just gonna tap that the teeniest bit right in the center of both lids. Now, if you wanna do something similar and you have browns and neutrals that you like, just use a highlighter. The only thing is I would use a powder highlighter. The uh, cream highlighters tend to be oil-based, whether it's coconut oil or whatever and that can affect the wear of mascara and other products. So I do like to use a powder on my eyes, and then I'm also gonna dot that in the inner corner, just using my pinky for some eye brightening effect. You know, I do this all the time, and I'm using what's left of my fingers, which is nothing really, up in the brow bone. Okay, and another thing that I love about this palette is I can use this deep brown, which is to me a pretty neutral deep brown, for my eyebrows, which I did the other day because I couldn't find an eyebrow product even though I have like five, and uh, it worked really nicely. So I'm just stamping it in, I'm using, it actually I think is an eyebrow brush, but I often use like my Eco Tools eyeliner brush. I'm just stamping it in straight lines where I need some coverage, and then I'm also just kind of spreading it. Doing the same on the other eye. This just happens to work for me and my brow shade. I find that you don't really need to match your brow shade. If you have some brows, you can blend, especially if, like me, you have several colors in your hair. 
and frankly since I got that news I think I'm a little scattered so Whew. All right, now I'm just using the other spoolie end and brushing through. Uh, my husband is with my son, so um, he's, you know, got all the insurance and handling everything. I'm going to add a little more on this side. Um, but I know he'd rather have my husband there than me anyway because I tend to get emotional and nervous. So... This has probably all worked out for the best, the way it happened. It's just one of those unexpected things. He was skiing, in case you're wondering. All right, I mean, I think it looks pretty good. I'm fully happy with that as a brow product too. You can always use a an eyeshadow in your brows, by the way. I mean, there's nothing that says you can't. It's gonna be safe for your eyes. Unless it's super powdery, it's not gonna go anywhere. You're not gonna have a problem. Now I'm going in with the Live Tinted Brow Gel. I don't like that this is two-sided. I've talked about this in my most recent video talking about mascaras. It was an empties video. There was just a bang. And my dog is sitting here, so I know it wasn't my dog. I never know which end to use. And I know they probably say on the website and I could read through it and I just, between all the different products and the different ends and the different techniques, I, I can't. I don't have the brain power bandwidth to deal with that kind of thing. So I figure how much am I going to screw it up if I go in with the quote unquote wrong end. And if that really messes it up, then this product is not very user friendly. <laughs> I'm just not going to spend that much time worrying about it. It's makeup. It should be fun. It should be fun. It should make me feel good hopefully make me look better, which would also make me feel better. It's another form of art supplies, you know? Like, I think chefs are artists, just like a painter's an artist. This is just another art form. I'm not saying I'm very good at it. I'm not saying I'm terrible, you know, but it's just fun. These are art supplies. Makeup is just another form of art, in my opinion, and some people are amazing at it. So that's the eye. I'm gonna put on some mascara so you can appreciate really how it looks. I think it's hard to tell at this point. And I'm just using my Ilia Limitless Lash Mascara, another one with the stupid different ends of the wand. Let me know if you prefer this kind of wand, if it's just me. And they're so popular. The effect of this mascara is nice, definitely lengthening and separating more than fluffy, volumizing, thick, clumpy. I prefer something in between the two. If you wanna hear about the Ilia Volumizing Mascara, I did talk about that in my most recent empties video, which I will link up above and down below. Talk about a few other mascaras there too. The Fit Glow, the Harvest, Organic, Beauty. Oh, the Tower 28. I'm not paying attention to which side of the wand I use. I just go in. Now, for the Tower 28 Juicy Balm. I have talked about the Tower 28 Juicy Balm before. I got this about a year and a half ago, I think. I don't know, I got it in a Sephora, like clean beauty box that I purchased. I'd never seen this product before, apparently, because it was never released. I fell in love immediately. This is the shade Mix, and I'll swatch it on the back of my hand. If you're not familiar with these, these were just released by Tower 28 officially. I think this was a trial to see how the market did with it. I loved it. It is a crayon, obviously, but it's a balm. Very soft. You just touch it and it comes off so gently, smoothly. Beautiful color to it. Like You can't really make it opaque. It doesn't usually look that opaque, or at least with my lip color underneath it, but it has a beautiful sheen. It is a balm. It's so comfortable. I love it. It's lightweight, doesn't seem very wasteful. I mean, it does have a plastic top. Well, I guess it's housed in plastic but the top actually stays on. So I was thrilled when they released these officially and released another shade that I thought I would love, which is this shade Shake. It is the pinkier shade. They have a more red orangey shade. And there it is. Now, I don't remember having to break in this one, but I can tell you this one is not as soft. I don't know if it has to do with the shade if it has to do with how long I've had it. But this one I loved from the very first second I tried it. This one just seems waxier. I don't mind that it's less opaque, but I haven't fallen in love with it like I did with Mix. 
it's also not as shiny. You can see it's just not as thick. I'm gonna try to put more on, but I didn't have to try with mix. It just, I touched it to my skin and that's how much came off. Whereas with this one, now it does look shiny, but I went over it multiple times. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it on. I have nothing on my lips. I did have some clear lip balm on, but it's mostly worn off. So I went over, you know, a few times. It's pretty translucent. It has sort of has that popsicle look that stained my lips, although when it wears off, I don't think it does stain. I think it's a lovely color. I'm just a little disappointed, and I'm curious to know if anyone out there has both tinted and tinted, has both mix and another shade, if the new formula of mix is different from say shake or if it's the original formula was just better than what they ended up releasing i don't know i on the one hand want to get another one to try and see on the other hand i don't want to spend my money on another one if it's going to be the same formula as shake also i'm not so crazy about the lip shade it's a little more red on me than i would like i'd prefer it to have a little more purple blue tones i see it's pink but it's not as pink as I would like. I'm gonna wipe these off before I get them all over everything like I typically do. I'm also gonna take my hair down. I see I have no jewelry on, which is leaves me feeling kind of naked. I mean, I have my watch on. But that's because I knew that my husband might be calling and I wanted it, I wanted to feel it ring or vibrate if that happened. So I do think this is a nice look. In person, I mean, I feel like it's more subtle. Like if I lean back, you see, it's a little more subtle. Like if I'm not in front of the ring light, even though the SPF was too deep for me, I feel like the foundation blended it in nicely. When I put on the foundation over it, like it's fine. But before I give final thoughts on that, I have one more product that is just to me fun. I talked about, I did a review on Vardis, which is a, which is, a supposedly clean teeth whitening system. I happen to love it. I've purchased it many times and I just purchased a whole bunch of other things and thought I would try the Sills set. Instant Fresh, three mouth sprays and these were so intriguing to me. Okay, the flavors are Radiant Musk, Beaming Petals, and Citrus Fresh. So I'm in the United States and we don't typically have flavors like Radiant Musk or beaming petals. Now Citrus Fresh, I could see us having this, is a Swiss company. These are trial sizes, so let me get this open. I'll also link the video on Vardis if you're interested in that. I know Munchkin, I'll take you out in just a couple minutes. I'm really almost finished, okay? You're a good boy. He's so good, I love my dog so much. Okay, so this is how it comes. I usually get my Vardis replenishments from Cosbar. So I don't know if Cosbar sells these. I bought these directly from Vardis. By the way, Vardis had like a 50% off sale for, I think it was Valentine's Day, and I'd already purchased all this stuff. I'm so mad. That's a fantastic discount, and Vardis is expensive. I'll link everything below. I'm not gonna try them all right now. Maybe I can smell them, but we gotta try the musk. Radiant musk. I mean, they're cute. These are really cute. They might be glass. I believe they're glass. This company is very into sustainability. Top comes off, they're spray. This one is citrus fresh, smells like a fresh mouth spray. Beaming petal, smells a little sweeter, but still refreshing and I'm kind of nervous, I gotta tell you. Radiant, I mean, even thinking about it, I'm having our time. Okay, let me, I wonder if it's vegan, I mean, I'm not a vegan, but okay, here we go. Why I'm looking in a mirror. <laughs> okay, here I go, guys. I mean, it just tastes minty. I don't know, it's sort of spearminty. Maybe I'll taste the musk later. It's really just kind of spearminty. Um, did I show you the bottle? It's so cute. I love minis. I 
just fine that I'm able to use them up and they're so cute and they carry well and I just love them. So interesting, Radiant Musk is just fine. I didn't need to be nervous. It also is supposed to have, which I talked about in the video, the same teeth protectant ingredient that's in all the toothpaste and mouthwash and teeth whitening system. Um, okay, so now I'm gonna do my final thoughts on everything, starting with the True Botanicals Everyday Skin Tint Broad Spectrum Sunscreen SPF 30. I love True Botanicals, it is very expensive. I found their products really to be worth it. I found when I stuck with them, my skin really responded super well. I'm probably gonna go back to their vitamin C, unless you guys have one that you love, let me know and recommend it down below because I need to add that back into my routine. I don't think this is worth it. I like other tinted SPFs just as well. The one good thing about this that I will say that I didn't think of till I'm talking about it right now, it did kind of dry down. So it didn't leave me especially dewy and it didn't leave me super tacky or anything. So that was nice. I don't know if that's worth it. If that's worth it to you to spend the money on this, then it's worth it. It's probably not worth it to me to spend that much money. I would, you know, I guess I have to look at the price comparisons. Otherwise, I would just stick with the, say, slip tint or the one I really, <clears throat> gosh, I got so excited I got choked up. The one I really, really love is the Josie Marin Tinted SPF, which was also in my yearly favorites at one point, which I'll link. This isn't a need to run out and try it. The Mob Beauty, aside from the packaging, which gives me a bit of angst, I quite love it. I probably will try a blush. They have some cream products, they have some powder products. I probably will try more from them as much as, well now that I have it and I've bought into it, I might as well fill it. The formulas are really great, both for the shimmers and the mattes. They're super easy to work with. They were really blendable. They're not too pigmented so that when I put it on, I'm not looking clownish, but yet I could build up the pigment if I want to. I think it's really pretty. I hope the sheen is still there. Of course, I can't see because my eyes are closed. <laughs> I always feel so weird. Like, is that helpful? <laughs> oh, and I love that I could use that shade in my brow. So again, I'll list the colors down below. I do recommend them. The formulas are really good. The Tower 28 Lip Balms, Juicy Balms. If the formulas are all like the shake, it's not necessary. I would rather do their lip jellies, either the milky ones or the clear, you know, the, you know, the, the tinted ones. To me, they're more comfortable. They deposit quite a bit of color too, or do something else. Maybe I'll change my mind as time goes on. I love, love, loved this one and the new formula at least in this shade isn't knocking it out of the park for me okay these Vardis mouth refreshing sprays I kind of wonder if I am getting the musky taste now there's something happening that isn't so great now <laughs> uh, I don't know if that's the musk maybe I could pin a comment down below and let you know if the other flavors do the same thing but basically it just tasted refreshing and I sort of still have that minty refreshing sensation but also some kind of taste going on that I'm not crazy about. I don't typically use this kind of product. I just bought it because I wanted to see what it was like. My son will use them and I like the idea that they have the enamel rebuilding particles in them and so I don't know if I'd ever buy them again. We'll have to see but I doubt it. So that is today's video. Please leave your comments down below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and I hope you find some time to pimper yourself today. Bye.